How's it guys? This is Davey FP and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, it's a little bit of a different one, but because we're not doing a deadline with Davey live stream in a little bit, I decided to do a final team review for those of you guys so that you don't miss out on the final team selection. Now while this team selection is quite final, obviously if there's some big news, maybe one of the players in my side is confirmed out, we could potentially look at a rotation in the team selection, but in terms of the transfers, I'm pretty sure this is quite set. So you can take this as gospel. I'm pretty sure this will be the final team going into that double gaming 27 deadline. But as I mentioned, no stream later today, so don't be on the lookout for that. But if you're still interested in seeing the final team selection, sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. So the transfers that we did make, we only had one free transfer, but I made these transfers last night. So if you guys did miss out on it, don't worry too much. Uh, only Harry Kane rose in price. So that was the only price change that happened last night. But we took out Bruno Fernandes, and then we did a change of plan. We instead took out Colvert Lewin and we brought in Jesse Lingard as well as Harry Kane. So yes, I'm not salty about the DCL captaincy blank for that triple captain at all. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But in terms of the double game week 28, it was not confirmed yesterday. And according to Ben Krellin, that makes it about a 10% chance of actually happening. So I'm willing to take the bet on that. I didn't kind of want to be restricted by holding on to DCL just for that double game week 28 when I was thinking of benching him and Bruno as well. So that's what it came down to. I was going to bench Bruno and DCL this way anyways so I decided to take a little bit of a punt on Jesse Lingard as well as Harry Kane because if you can recall both Jesse Lingard and Harry Kane both have a fixture in that blank game week 29 so we're kind of getting the squad up and prepared for that upcoming blank so that we managed to get a full starting 11 hopefully in that blank game week 29 before wild carding in game week 31 so I was also looking at a player like Mason Mount because Mason Mount's fixtures this week and next week and the game week after the blank look quite good I think he plays Leeds next week and then he plays West Brom after the blank but that's that's the thing about Jesse Lingard that's also quite appealing is that he has leads this week. Now, while we do have three options from that lead starting 11 uh, in terms of Dallas, Rafinha, and also Bamford up front, I also wanted to have a little bit of coverage for Antonio because a lot of people have been going for Antonio this week. I don't own Antonio. I don't have any way of getting him. I guess I could have taken DCL for Antonio, but I still wanted Harry Kane, if you know what I'm saying, because Harry Kane is the upcoming captain option, especially in that blank. So I would have wanted to get him in the blank anyway. Saying goodbye to Bruno is a little bit hard there just because of how consistent he's been the season but as I mentioned I was going to bench him against Man City anyway and with fixtures upcoming with West Ham a blank and then Brighton I'm willing to take a little bit of a punt of taking one of the most highly owned players if not the most highly owned player in FPL at the moment and uh, go for some other options that I think can do better over the short term future that doesn't mean that we're going to not have Bruno Fernandes from now to the end of the season on that game week 31 wild card we can definitely bring him back in lost a little bit of money on him I think we lost about 0 0.6 0 0.5 million but in terms of team value this season, I'm not trying to put too much importance on that team value and rather decide on players that I think are going to do well. So these are the two transfers we did make. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree with them or if you went with some other alternative options instead of JC Lingard and Harry Kane. So now going on to the final team selection, this is the team selection. I try to do as much color correction as possible because I know those of you in the deadline streams are always asking for it. So starting off on goal, this is probably one of the main dilemmas that we do have. It's Forster and it's Johnston. I kind of think that I might as well just play Forster. I took a punt on him last week thinking that there was that hope that he would play in this double and that's the fact of the matter. The also thing about Forster is that if he does play against Sheffield United and then gets dropped, I actually am perfectly fine with that. I think he might even go into the negative points against Man City and if McCarthy comes back into the lineup, we simply just get Johnston off the bench because I don't think Forster will play either of those two games in this game week. The defense kind of picks itself. Diaz and Cancelo aren't going anywhere. The only kind of deliberation I was going over was Dallas or Sufal. But because I'm playing Rafinha and Bamford, I'm going to play the odds here, roll the dice, maybe Maybe hope that Leeds or Dallas gets a goal and attacking return uh, because I am, as I said, playing Bamford and Rafinha, so I hope that they do well. The midfield line, Son, Lingard, Gundogan, Salah and Rafinha also kind of picks itself. Uh, going with that double up of Son and Kane against Crystal Palace. Now, while Crystal Palace have been better defensively, I still do think that Spurs should get quite a comfortable win here and I'm hoping that Son and Kane do well. Last game week was an absolute nightmare of panic, not owning Harry Kane. So I decided I'm not going to deal with that anymore. I'm going to bring the big English striker back into my lineup and hope that he bangs against Crystal Palace because uh, that'll make me quite happy. Lingard against Leeds. Spoken about that Leeds fixture. Leeds defensively are also quite hit or miss. So I'm expecting Lingard to do well here. Now, whether he does well, doesn't really matter. I've simply brought him in for that blank. It's a little bit of a punt. Nice differential there. Not many people do own him. And at about that 6.0 million mark, should hopefully return in terms of that value per million. Our captain is going to be Gundogan this week. That's kind of self-explanatory. The only Man City attacker we have. I must admit that I am tempted to go for Cancelo as he was benched 
benched in double game week 26 so he should be fit and ready to go for these upcoming two game weeks I think he definitely will start against United but it's a Southampton fixture that you are targeting and so I'm kind of hopeful that Cancelo and Gundogan both play in that one but with the way Man City are playing I think they could get something against United and then against Southampton I think it's gonna be quite a goal fest uh, for the blue side of Manchester so I'm hoping that Gundogan is in amongst the goals in that game Salah against Fulham I decided to keep Salah instead of Bruno Fernandes I know that could be quite a questionable decision by some of you guys but in terms of the fixtures upcoming Salah has Fulham and Wolves and I just think in terms of those fixtures I rather trust the Egyptian winger than the Portuguese midfielder so that's why I kept Salah here and also I could still afford the options I wanted by downgrading the cheap alternative of Bruno Fernandes and then finally Rafinha and Bamford against West Ham West Ham are one of those sides that recently have been great defensively and Leeds are also hit and miss so I'm hoping in terms of that Leeds side that they are managed to put up a good shift in this game and that will lead to quite a good hopeful score in terms of my FPL game week on the bench Watkins now Watkins this is the decision that I'm a little bit unhappy about because I was going to play Watkins I was perfectly comfortable with playing him I think that he could do well this week but unfortunately because I have all these other players on my starting 11 I have to bench one of them I could bench one of Dallas Rafinha or Bamford but I decided to go with a triple up of leads instead of kind of shifting the team around and just kind of banking on one fixture and hoping that they do well instead of differentiating and splitting the odds and going with multiple game weeks. So Watkins, while he could still do well, I think that Wolves defensively might put in a good shift against Aston Villa. And with Grealish out injured, it basically has been confirmed in the press conferences this week that Jack Grealish should be out injured. Um, so I think that's going to affect them from a creative point of view. And uh, I think Watkins might struggle. The thing with Aston Villa as well is that the goal scorers are usually quite split. We have El Ghazi in the lineup. We have Traore in the lineup. Those players have actually been doing better than Watkins recently. Uh, so that might be a little bit of risk there, not starting him when they have those forward options. But I'm just kind of banking on maybe one of the other alternative scoring and it not being Watkins. And then Sufal on the bench. So while West Ham have been better defensively, I just simply have to do this because of those forward options that I am playing from Leeds. I'm hoping that Leeds from an attacking point of view pitch up this game and uh, maybe that uh, leads to the correct decision of having Sufal on the bench. And then finally, we have Lucas Digne on the bench against Chelsea. I know that there's some people that are playing Lucas Digne and why I do agree that I would rather play Lucas Digne instead of someone like DCL. I do think in terms of the fixture, Chelsea, a top six opposition there. I think they're going to put in a good shift defensively and hopefully from an attacking point of view. Now, while Lucas Digne is on some set pieces, I think that's significant and might return to the lineup. If you do recall against West Bromwich Albion, he came off the bench because Everton were looking a little bit lackluster. And then as soon as Sigurdsson came on, he managed to put an assist for a Charleston. So I definitely think he'll be on the set piece duties. While that doesn't make Lucas Digne the worst option in the world, I think that he definitely will be a little bit more conservative playing against Chelsea. And that's why I simply am benching him. Johnston also on the bench, which I'm a little bit unhappy about. I think both of my keepers are relatively good fixtures. I almost trust Johnston a little bit more to get that uh, clean sheet against Newcastle than maybe a Sheffield United for Forster. But because of me bringing in Forster and him having a double game week, I think that I might as well just play for him and take a little bit of a punt. So this is going to wrap the video, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. I know it was a little bit of a shorter one, but I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of the team selection. If you guys didn't watch the team selection yesterday, uh, so this is the final team going into that double game week 27. As I always say, hope the green arrows are in your favor this week, and I'm hoping that we can kind of make it 20 green arrows in a row. Stay safe this weekend and enjoy your weekend overall, and hopefully it's a great game week. I'm going to be signing off. It's been Davey FPL, and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.